Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net where I teach beginners the skills they need to get their first software development job, building Windows and web apps at the world's best companies as quickly as possible. So up to now, we've been focusing on several things related to Visual Basic, the syntax itself. We've looked at Visual Studio and its various windows that help us write code. We've talked about the .NET Framework class library. We've talked about the .NET runtime. We've talked about uh, compiling, running on users' computers. And so I'm sure at this point, you're itchy and you're ready to build real applications. You know, applications that have more attractive user interfaces. You don't want to just write console applications for your entire programming career, right? You want to build web-based applications or Windows-based applications. So in the second to last instructional video in this series, uh, I'm going to discuss event-driven programming. And event-driven programming is really at the heart of all of Microsoft's presentation APIs. In other words, it's at the heart of those, of those little neighborhoods of classes that are dedicated to building um, uh, web pages or, or Windows Forms or working with data and so on. All right. So an API is application programming interface. And in the context of .NET, uh, the entire framework is an API, an interface that we can program against. But then there are these, again, little neighborhoods or subsections uh, of the entire framework class library that are dedicated to a specific purpose, whether it be building Windows, web, apps, working with databases, and so on. Okay. So at any rate, uh, event-driven programming is at the heart of all of these. And the, the essential idea here is that uh, it allows you to plug in and handle key events in either the life cycle of the application's execution or handle key events that are raised whenever an end user interacts with the program in a certain way, whether it be clicking a button, hovering over uh, a given area of of the web page or the web form or the Windows form or what have you. Okay, so uh, it all starts with a fundamental understanding of how events work. So up to this point in our simple console window applications, we've really only been handling one key event. So when our application starts up, we've been handling the main uh, method and we've said that uh, the main method is, is special in console window applications because it's the first method that fires off whenever the application is executed. So in a sense, it's responding to the application started event, even though it's not quite phrased that way. Uh, however, in a modern user interface, whether it be, again, a native Windows application or a web-based application, users can interact with the various elements that they see on screen. They can hover their mouse cursor over elements. They can press keys on the keyboard. They can type text into fields. They can drag and drop various elements that they see on the screen. They can click on things, and so on. And so as a software developer, you can write code that responds to these interactions. You can decide which ones you're going to respond to and which ones you're going to ignore. So when these interactions happen, the .NET runtime raises events uh, and you can decide whether you want to respond to that event or if you want to ignore that event. And then you get to decide what should happen whenever the user clicks this button, hovers their mouse cursor over, or whatever the case might be. So speaking specifically about the user interface, every single control, whether it be a text box control or a button control or a drop down list or a grid or whatever the case might be, they have different events that you can write to handle. And we'll show how that works in just a moment. So how does this manifest itself in the applications that you'll actually write? Well, in this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how you're going to get the same experience of working with events, whether you write a Windows application or a web application. So using the techniques that we've learned before, we're going to create a new project. So to begin with, I want you to select the WPF application uh, project template type. And you can see above it, there's this Windows Form application. It's actually an older API. It came out with the original .NET framework in 2002. And then in 2005, uh, they introduced a new style of, of presentation framework for building Windows applications called WPF, Windows, um, uh, Windows Presentation Foundation. And uh, it's a little more flexible. I assure you that anything you learn in WPF can probably be transferred over uh, into the older style Windows Forms application API. All right, so uh, it has a little bit more momentum because it's newer and more people are using it and it, it offers some improvements over the older API. So after choosing that, we're gonna call this project WPF Events and click OK. All right, the first thing I wanna do is display the toolbox. I'm gonna pin it down. 
and I'm going to open up the common WPF controls here. And what I'll do is I'm going to drag and drop a button from the toolbox onto the designer surface in the upper left hand corner. And you can move it around and resize it if you wish. That's fine. It won't really matter. And then I'm going to drag and drop a label and put it below uh, the, the button. The first thing I'm going to do is select the button and go to uh, the properties window. Let me pin that down while I'm at it here and pin down the solution explorer too. All right, so it should be configured like what you see on screen here. I'm going to select the button and then I'm going to give the button a name. I'm going to call this my button and I'm going to select the label and I'm going to call this my label and then I'm also going to clear out the content for the label so it shouldn't display anything uh, whenever the application first loads. All right, so now you should see a second tab available in uh, Visual Studio called mainwindow.xaml.vb. If you don't see this, uh, then what you can do is go to your Solution Explorer and drill down uh, beneath the mainwindow.xaml. There should be a file called mainwindow.xaml.vb. You can just double click that to open it up in the main area. And the first thing you might notice is that this is called class main window. And if you look at the main window.xaml and you look at the very top of its definition, uh, you'll see that the class name for this is main window as well. So these are really two parts of the whole and they'll get, they, they define the two aspects of working with forms. There's the presentation which is defined by all this uh, HTML-like syntax called XAML, X-A-M-L, all right? And then there is the code that we'll write in Visual Basic that will handle or that we will write logic with to, to actually uh, do something meaningful whenever users interact with the various elements on our, uh, on our form, okay? So that's all that I really wanna say about that. This really deserves a, a, uh, a discussion of, of XAML and WPF and working and building um, uh, Windows applications that we're not going to talk about in the remainder of this lesson. But it's important to see that this is a class and so what we want to do is whenever a new instance of this class is created, so whenever your application is launched, what we want to do is in the constructor we're going to wire up that button control so that when you click it something happens. So we're going to wire it up to a method called an event handler. And to do this we're going to need to create a constructor. Now there's a couple of ways to do this but the easiest way that I found is to select the object that you want to work with from this leftmost uh, drop down, which in this case we're just working with the main window class. And then over here in the right hand side, we can select which methods that we want to work with. In this case, we're just going to create a new constructor. And whenever I select that, let me remove these, you can see that it creates some templated code for a constructor for this main window class. And so here, what we can do is write uh, some code like so in order to and a, add a handler to the click event of the button on our form and uh, we'll do this. So we'll add a handler my button dot click and we will give it what's called a delegate so address of me dot my button underscore click, a method, or in other words, an event handler we have not created yet. And when I hit the enter key on my keyboard, notice that um, we get the blue squiggly line. The problem is that we haven't yet defined this method in our, in our class. So it, it says that my button now click is not a member of WPF events main window, all right? So to resolve this, what I can do is hover my mouse cursor over the little red dash. It opens up to the red X icon contextual menu and one of the options there is to generate a method stub for my button underscore click in uh, the WPF events main window. When I click that here it creates a private sub my button underscore click with some input parameters that uh, will be sent in from the .NET Framework runtime. You can see that by default, this little template that was generated for us will throw a new exception. And this is just used as a placeholder, a reminder that we've not yet implemented this method yet. So I'm going to comment that out now that I'm ready to write some code. And the code I'm going to write is going to be pretty simple. Whenever somebody clicks on the button, we're going to set the labels content property equal to hello world. 
all right? So what attaches this event to the operation of clicking? It's this line of code that we wrote in the constructor. This gets fired off whenever a new instance of our window is created. So it automatically wires up the click event of the button to the address of this method. And so that whenever a user decides to click on the button, this method is fired off and our code block inside will be executed. So as you might expect, whenever we run the application, you can see we will click the button and our message will get printed to screen. We will close the application. So what was the purpose of this exercise? Well, it wasn't to teach you about how to build WPF applications, although you might have learned a little bit uh, if you've never done that before. It was really to uh, explain the nature of handling events. Events are raised by the .NET Framework runtime, by end users, and more. So in WPF, each window, each control, and even those objects that don't have a visual component, like those objects that control navigation between windows, those objects that handle communication with the network or the file storage and so on, they all expose some events. So as a developer, you can choose which events to respond to by writing code in a special method called an event handler. What makes it an event handler? Because we've wired it up to a certain event that's raised by uh, the .NET Framework. So what's so special about an event handler method? Well, typically their method signature is defined by the object itself, in this case by a button. So in the case of a button control, the click event requires an event handler to be defined that accepts two input paran parameters. The sender of type system.object that represents uh, the caller that fired the event. And then second, a routed event args object called E that contains extra information about the call, who called it, uh, how, and, and so on. So many times you can ignore these input parameters, but occasionally they will allow you to access important details that are sent by the caller of the event. So the key idea is that we've attached a new event handler to the click event of the button. We use the add handler statement to pair an event and an, and an event handler together. Um, and so, as I said earlier, this is actually we're passing the address of the event uh, handler itself. Uh, this is also known as a delegate. In other words, we're delegating a particular method uh, to handle this specific event. So Visual Studio helped me write that code by automating it, some of it, with helpful IntelliSense prompts and code snippets. Uh, I use the term attach an event. Some people call this registering an event. Uh, we can actually attach multiple event handlers to a single event and even programmatically remove event handlers by using the remove handler statement. So if I decided at some point I didn't want the my button underscore click event handler to handle the button click any longer, I could write other code to say remove handler from my button dot click, remove it with this delegate. Uh, so remove the address of me dot my button underscore click. Okay. So there are also declarative ways to an, attach an event to an event handler. Uh, we've purely been working here in the uh, designer pane by dragging and dropping controls from the toolbox onto the designer surface. Uh, but when we did that, you'll notice that we were actually generating this XAML code that we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, and this XAML code is really just uh, it's just a, uh, an XML-like syntax that allows you to create instances of objects, instances of objects that have some uh, visual component to them. Uh, so in this particular case, we create an instance of a button class and an instance of a label class, okay? And so by doing this, let me kind of separate these properties. So not only can you create new instances, for example, of a button class, but you can also initialize their properties like we've done here in the remainder of this uh, XAML element. But you can also use this to wire up uh, events. So I can do uh, use the click uh, property, I guess you could say, and you can see here that I can generate a new event handler or I can go ahead and attach this to my button click. If I select new event handler, it will automatically generate a new name, my button underscore click underscore one, and I can even write different code inside of here. So let's just for fun, copy this line of code, we'll put it here, and um, hello world again, and we can comment out this line of code and then run the application. You can see that 
we're able to now use this other uh, implementation that we wired up purely from our declarative code, this XAML code that we've created, okay? So before I end this project and move on to the next one, I want to expand on what I said at the outset of this lesson. Every single control has actually quite a few events that you can choose to handle or ignore depending on what you want your application to do. So to see a comprehensive list of all of the events that are available uh, for a given control, what you can do is actually select the control and then go to the properties window. You can see next to the little wrench icon, there's a little uh, electric bolt icon. And when I click that, this is a listing of all of the events that are available to the button control. And some of these events deal with the layout and the positioning at the time that the window is first loaded and displayed to the end user. And it allows you to preempt that process and perform additional layout and positioning logic. Some of these events that are listed here, uh, they deal with keyboard access or interaction. Some of deal with stylus uh, interaction whenever the user is accessing the app from a tablet. Some of these events deal with normal mouse operations like clicks and hovers or drag and drop. Some of these events work together uh, addressing smaller parts of a bigger operation such as drag and drop and a lot more. But you can see that there's there are dozens of events just for this single button that we can handle. And the same is true with the label control. If I can select it here, let me see if I can get my mouse cursor on it. There we go. So now we're looking at the events that are fired off by the label control, and it has many events as well, all right? So the challenge won't be getting access to a given control or elements events. It'll be determining the nuanced, nuanced difference between the various events that are available and picking the right events that you want to handle as the application developer. Also, each event will be raised in a different order. Sometimes the logic that you write is expecting a certain order of these events to be fired off. And so oftentimes developers introduce subtle bugs into their application by not understanding the order of execution. So that's where a lot of testing comes in, setting a lot of breakpoints and then uh, attempting different operations, whether it be with the mouse keyboard, the stylus, whatever the case might be, all right? Uh, so there's actually events for the window itself, like if I were to put my mouse cursor here and you can see we're now looking at the events for the window itself. You know, we wrote code in the constructor of the main window class, but there are other events that happen as the window is loaded, as it's unloaded, as it's moved around, uh, as it's resized. And there are events that are concerning the lifetime of the entire app itself. Uh, the app is started, the app is closing and so on. So in, this, in the case of a WPF application, those events are handled in this uh, application.xaml.vb file, okay? And I want to emphasize that these are just events for the user interface. There are other events that can be handled for data access, for file access, for network access, and a lot more. But the main point, the main takeaway is that there are events everywhere you look. And if you can dream up an action that you want your application to perform, your first thought should be, what event should the application be responding to? Uh, and then research in MSDN using your favorite search engine to locate the right event for that job. Find the event and write code to handle that given event in order to carry out the action that you want to, okay? So to reinforce this idea, I'm going to practically duplicate this example and I'm going to do that by building an ASP.NET Web Forms application. So my goal is to show you that, first of all, understanding the nature of events is important whenever you're building applications in .NET. And secondly, much of the knowledge that you gain from understanding one API can be applied to other APIs as well. So in this particular case, we're going to transfer our knowledge of building a Windows desktop application with WPF to a Web Forms application that will execute uh, on a uh, web server and consumed in a web browser. So off camera, I installed Visual Studio 2013 Express for web, and you see I have it opened here. You can download this and install it from the same place wherever you downloaded uh, Express 2013 for Windows Desktop. So I just went to the, the download page and went through the same operations as before. I'm not gonna demo, demonstrate that in this lesson. If you wanna follow along, by all means, go ahead and install uh, 
uh, Express 2013 for web. If you already have professional or greater Visual Studio, you can, um, you can follow along by just choosing the right template as you create a new project. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and start by creating a new project. We're gonna select ASP.NET Web Application. So Visual Basic ASP.NET Web Application, we'll call this ASP.NET Events and click the OK button. And here on the new ASP.NET project dialog, I want to just select the empty, empty, empty template and then click the OK button. We're going to ignore all the other options here. All right. And once we have the project loaded up into the main area, I'm going to right click the project and select uh, add a new web form. So choose web form here and we're going to name this web form default and click OK and you can see in the Solution Explorer it'll create a default.aspx page it will load that page into the main area here and I'm going to switch from the source view to actually the design view we're going to ignore the combination of, uh, of HTML and uh, the ASP.NET declarative syntax we're just going to work purely with the designer and we're going to repeat the steps that we took earlier Let's go to the toolbox. I'm going to pin that down and I'm going to drag and drop a button control into this little blue div area here at the very top. So I'll drag and drop it inside of there and I'll put my mouse cursor next to it and create a space on my keyboard. And then I'll go to the label control and drag and drop that and put it right next to it. So since I have the label control selected, I'm going to go to the properties window here and I'm going to, I'm going to call this and give this the name, this the ID rather of my label. And I'm gonna clear out its text property, which is the equivalent of the content property in the WPF version of the label. And then I'm gonna select a button and I'm going to uh, name that my button. All right, like so, save that. The next thing that I wanna do is just go into this uh, blank area and I'm gonna double click all right, so I'm gonna do this, add handler, and I'm gonna work with my button, dot, click, comma, and I'm gonna give it a delegate, the address of me, and I'll give it a name, uh, my button, underscore, click, all right? And when I hit enter on my keyboard, notice that we get the blue squiggly line. I'm going to hover my mouse cursor over the little red dash, which brings up the red X icon contextual menu. I get the same message that I saw on the WPF side of things, generate method stub for my button underscore click in ASP.NET, uh, ASP.NET events dot underscore default. Here we get the same uh, or a very similar uh, event handler stubbed out method. I'm going to comment out the throw new not implemented exception. Here I'm going to write uh, my label dot text equals hello world and I'll save everything and I'm going to click the run. Notice that instead of it saying debug, it says Internet Explorer next to the little run icon. So when we run this application, our, our application uh, will be deployed to a, uh, a special uh, web server that's able to run locally for testing and development purposes and uh, it will uh, also load up Internet Explorer and then tell Internet Explorer to to request that web application that's been loaded up into the Internet Information Services Express that little mini web server that runs on my on my local computer so we'll go ahead and click the run button Internet Explorer pops up you can see in the in the Windows taskbar over here that IS Express popped up as well. If I click on it, you can kind of see uh, that it has a site deployed to it called ASP Net Events. Great, and it gives us the address. You can see the address matches whatever we're looking at. Uh, and we can also stop the site and do some other things, but I don't want to do that. I want to actually click this button in the upper left-hand corner. And we get the word hello world pop up into uh, our web app. All right, awesome. So just like we saw in the WPF example, we can also wire up the event handler declaratively uh, by going into the source code for our default.aspx page. And I can, for example, do onClick, onClick equals, and then I can create a new event 
just like we did before or select one of the existing events. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it create a new my button underscore click one. I'm going to comment out this line of code where we added the, added the handler uh, imperatively through the Visual Basic code and I'm gonna do my label dot text equals hello world again in this case. I'm gonna rerun the application It redeploys the, my application with all the changes I just made to IS Express. It opens it up in Internet Explorer. I click the button and I see the new message, hello world again. So we can wire up events uh, either declaratively in our ASPX or we can wire them up in our ASPX.bb file, the code behind for our, uh, for our default uh, web page, okay? And then finally, if I were to go back out here to design and actually select the button, and then I can, in my properties window, I can see that it also has this events button next to it. When I choose that, I can see all of the events for this button. And these are just the server side events, not the client side events. If you want to handle client side events, you'll have to handle them using a JavaScript. Um, and that's a whole other series of videos. Let's recap what we talked about in this lesson. Whether you're interested in building a web form or a Windows form application, at this point it just becomes a matter of learning the different controls that are available for each and then learning the different events that are raised by those controls. Uh, what's the behavior of those controls that I as a programmer can write to handle? So in my experience, about 75% of events are common across those controls. Uh, you can click on it, you can drag something over it, you can you know, type into it, things of that nature. In most cases, you can anticipate the events that will be available to you without having to memorize a list or anything like that. So here's what I recommend. Whenever you need a particular control in your application, simply peruse the names of the events like we did here where we scan through the various events for a given control. Uh, and if you find one you're not sure what it really does, you can in some cases, like here, you can click on it and you can see a mini explanation at the very bottom of the events pane for the properties window. So this command event fires whenever a button is clicked and an associated command is defined. What does that mean? Well, we might need to go to MSTN to learn a little bit more about commands, okay? Um, sometimes that little message can be a little cryptic, uh, so that usually means that I need to get more information, a comprehensive understanding uh, of a particular concept as a whole, whether it be about data binding or the life cycle of a form or a web page or the purpose of a given control or some big picture idea. And once I have that in place and I have a mental map of how a given idea works, then the individual events will make a lot more sense to me. All right, so I rely on MSDN. I search in MSDN a lot during this process. There's probably not a day that goes on that I don't spend at least a half hour, an hour in MSDN learning more, uh, researching more to find out what I need to do to make my idea a reality by utilizing the events or either or understanding just the big picture of, of how all the pieces kind of fit together to accomplish a larger task, okay? So also fundamental to learning any API is learning the life cycle of events that occur during the execution of the application. Not just the individual controls, but the application itself and all the steps that it has to go through from initialization to the point where it actually displays a window to the end user. So for example, this URL here, it uh, discusses the ASP.NET application lifecycle for Internet Information Services 7.0. And this URL discusses the ASP.NET page lifecycle. So understanding not just the entire application, but then individual pages, what their lifecycle is as well. Uh, again, at a much higher level than just individual controls. And understanding this is really the key to understanding how to build powerful web applications using ASP.NET. So admittedly, these are very meaty topics, but they're the key to understanding what's going on under the hood to deliver a dynamic page via ASP.NET. Similarly, there are good jumping off points for learning about the lifetime of WPF applications. So I found that this URL and this article, Application Management Overview, if you were to scroll down, it talks about not just uh, some topics that may not be so interesting, but about midway or about a quarter of the way through, it talks about the application lifetime for WPF applications. 
So at some point, becoming either a web developer or a Windows desktop developer means getting a grasp of these topics. And it all starts with understanding events like we discussed in this lesson. So hopefully it was beneficial. Hopefully you can see how you're able to leverage the knowledge of one API and how we're able to take essentially the same actions in these two different APIs, uh, even in these two different applications, and yet come to very similar types of uh, features. Uh, it's all due to the fact that Microsoft has designed them this way to make it easier on us to learn and leverage and utilize in our own applications. All right. So uh, definitely want to move on from here in the direction you want to go and learn more now about the specific uh, presentation uh, API that you plan on using, whether you want to become a Windows developer or a web app developer. And then you'll also want to add to that some knowledge of, of a data access uh, technology or API like ADO.net or a sub uh, a sub API called the entity framework, which is probably the most popular option you can choose today. Okay. Okay. So just one more lesson left. Uh, if you made it this far, you're doing great. Hang in there. It's a short lesson and uh, you'll learn a lot. So we'll see you in that lesson. Thank you.